Well, good evening once again. My name is Peter Lubayo. So today we are looking at how to answer true, false, not given. So I will talk about the top tips required in answering the true, false, not given question type of the IELTS reading. Then we we'll move on to a practice section. So now the your aim is to classify the statement of given under the true, false, not given. Now. This is different from yes, no, not given because it's most of the yes, no, not given questions are just opinions, suggestions, and the writer's view. But in this case, you are giving statement of fact. They are factual statements. So you are good to say they are true and is or false or the information is not given. I'm still going to talk about the key idea here, what they mean about true, false, and not given. I'm still going to talk about that. Now, this question type is st st testing your strength. I mean, your ability to quickly look, localize where the information is in the passage and your ability to translate it, to give it the correct meaning and correctly let them know whether it is true, false, not given. So your ability to locate and your vocabulary. So apparently, it is not a test of whether you know synonyms or antonyms, or that the question, the question looks similar to what you have in the passage. No. You have to ensure that you understand the whole statement of facts that has been given. So it is not just, if, even if it contains some keywords, that keywords can be in more than one part of the essay. So in locating where it is, you have to understand the whole meaning, which part of the essay actually is related to what they have talked about. So you can say true, false, not given. If you are looking at a different part of the passage, then you are going to get it wrong. Now, even after getting the location, you have to be able to translate that and understand the whole meaning. And not just that there are similar words or the same words or similar words of the same meaning. You understand what I'm trying to say. So now moving away from that, apparently you have to use keywords to locate where the fact is, like I said, but those keywords can be in many parts. But the good thing about this type of question is that the questions follow the same order as contained in the text. So that means if you find the answer to question one in paragraph three. Yes, I deliberately said paragraph three. So if the answer to question one is in paragraph three, then for the next question, that is question number two, three, four, or what have you now, it, you don't need to go to paragraph one and two. That means they are not related to that question. Another question type is going to deal with that. That's what it means, okay? So if you find question one, the answer to the, the, the statement related to what you can use to answer question one in paragraph three, the answer to question two will be in paragraph three or under it. That is paragraph four, five, or whatever you have there. So one strong thing you need to look out for are statement of uncertainty and qualifying words. Now, let me start with qualifying words. As those, these, these are very important. Now, for instance, the passage says that some people or majority of people, majority of pilot, key pilots, you know, just qualifying words like that. Now, coming into the statement, you have to be very careful because they have the tendency of changing the meaning of that statement, so, and it might not correlate with what you have in the passage. And also statement of uncertainty, expressions that are, re represent uncertainty, like uh, some people believe, so in this case now believe, some people believe that so, 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 so. However, you know, that doesn't mean that that is what the writer is saying. So, or the writer suggests this opine that, you know, I'll move away from that. So as you would always do, it is key, it is a good practice for you to skim through the question. Now, why, why do I 
have to mention this. Because you know that the question follow the same order as we have in the text. So if you skim through, if you have just, let's say six questions under that um, passage, then if you can just find one of them, if you can find answer to one of them, then you can use the location of where you found that one to, to know where the others could be. All right, I hope you understand that. And I hope I've been clear enough. Now, let me now give you the meaning because um, I used to find it, um, so I used to be worried and annoyed when people don't get true force not given. Yeah, because why? Because all, all we need to do is already given on that question paper. So the statement is true. I'll be using what I've written in that blue box now. The statement is true if it has the same meaning with what you have in the text. Although they will say if the statement agrees with the information in the text, but what it means is that it has the same meaning. It's not, it doesn't mean it has the same words or it looks similar, but it has the same meaning as what you have in the text. Then it is false. If the given statement is opposite, is opposite in meaning, not that one word there is opposite and anto in the text. And then the last part, not given, essentially saying that this statement is not, is not true, okay? It is not false. So if it is not true, it is not false, it is not given. Or there is no information given about what you are asking us at all. All right. I'm just going to check my chat there. Yeah, someone is asking me that, I, am I saying that true force not given is arranged in order? Yes, yes. True force not given questions are arranged in order, please. Okay, so you don't have to waste time on um, reading the entire passage, okay? So once you find one, you just use that location to find the other ones. Now, let me see if I can tell you some common pitfalls, okay? Now, people assume that it is true because the statement is quite similar, okay? So once, you, you know, because you are in exam hall and you've been taught that what you need to pass high of is are just strategies. Okay, and you're just quickly looking at what the answer will be. Oh, they look the same, and you quickly take no. Because they look quite similar doesn't mean it is true. It has to be true. It has to be the same in meaning, in entirety, with what you have in the text. So all the qualifying words must not change the meaning. There must not be something additional added to it. Okay, now. And um, it, some people also say false. A lot of candidates have issue between false and not given, okay? They say they pick false when the answer is actually not given, okay? Probably when we look at a practice section, we'll understand what this means. Now, the third one is rationalizing beyond the information given. Now, here I said, do not rationalize. There are instances where you might logically link things together, but to be on the safe side, just keep in your mind that all you are looking for is what you have in that text, okay? Now, importantly, you need to forget whatsoever you know about that topic before you. Forget all that you know about it. I mean, it's as good as saying that, yeah, it's, it's terrible, but yes, you may have to forget all you know about that topic. For instance, we are, most of us are health workers. So if you know this is what this is, and they are talking about health, you may have to do as if you are not even an health worker at all, okay? And focus on what the information you have in the passage. That's what I'm trying to say, okay? Now, what a lot of people also do is that they are very good in understanding the meaning, but when it comes to putting down their answers, they forget that they are treating 
true false not given and yes no not given. And the same happens when they are treating yes no not given, they forget that the answer uh, to provide a yes no not given. I hope you understand what I mean. So please be cautious of that. Do not wait until the when you get to the examination hall before you correct yourself. A lot of people make that mistake during their practice and they say, oh, I'll be all right. No, you won't be all right. You have to quickly correct that. Once you are treating, yes, no, not giving, maintain yes, no, not giving, because it can pull your score down um, adversely. Okay, so I'll move on to see if we can quickly look at a passage. Oh, yes, I have an example here for, uh, well, we have the, in the passage, okay, I, I've highlighted, I took this from best my test. So they said, the majority of the hard glaciers are located near the poles. That's what we have in the passage. But the statement given is all glaciers exist near the north and south poles of the earth, you know. So the only thing you have to look for here although they look similar, but they are not the same meaning because one says the majority of them and another one is saying all. Do you understand what I mean? So in this case, it is not true. It is not true. So a lot of people rush to pick that this is true. Okay, but the information we have is that majority. So uh, this will make it false. All right. So let's see if we can look at Cambridge IF 8-3, passage 2. 